The Eastern Nagaland People's Organization has decided to participate in the Nagaland Legislative Assembly elections following an executive meeting of the group that was conducted on February 4 at Tourist Lodge in Dimapur. The ENBO has decided to, quote, relax, unquote, its resolution to abstain from the state's electoral process with immediate effect a press release from the NBO received here on February 4 stated. The organization took the decision following a request of the Ministry of Home Affairs, the statement said. The ENBO has requested all its citizens to cooperate with the government in the conduct of the elections and to not create any law and order problem within the ENBO's jurisdiction. And to talk a little more on this story, I'm being joined by our colleague El Muli, live from the newsroom. Hi El, thank you for hi, joining hi, me. Naomi. And yeah, going straight to the question, uh, L, what could be the reason the ENBO again took a U-turn on its decision to abstain from participating in the elections this year? Yeah, Nami, ever since the issue of a separate state that supposedly would have been carved out of Nagaland, even ever, ever since this issue came up, I think uh, we would have appreciated a little bit of transparency in here, I think. Uh, because this is something that would affect a lot of people. It's not just something a matter of the people and the communities in the eastern regions of the state. This is also about the cultural, social, economic capital of the entire people uh, of Nagaland. So I think it would have been really wonderful and something that would build trust among the communities if there was some kind of transparency in this. And uh, ever since this issue came up, we have been facing a lot of um, uh, we have been facing a lot of criticism, even in the media. How come you know everything is going smoothly and suddenly someone bombs us with this news? Someone throws us with this news about boy God and about agitations and protests, you know, in regard to this issue and. It was not really surprising that the ENP also threw, uh, threw another bombshell at us this time and in the form of their decision to join the elect elections again. Um, right now, uh, the situation is quite sensitive, especially with the e election going on. So I wouldn't really be able to point out what the reasons might be. But what the ENP has, ENPO has said in a statement was that they were uh, deciding to participate in the elections on the appeal of the Ministry of Home Affairs, of course, that, that's very nice sounding. But then again, there could be also other reasons. First thing, uh, we have talked about this before, even Hornbill TV, we have, we have talked about this before too. Whether we like it or not, elections will happen. Whether you boycott it or not, elections will go ahead. Because this is a constitutional mandate. It is not an administrative decision of the local authorities. And it is certainly not a legisl legislative uh, regulation that we uh, conduct elections at our whims. Just because the state is peaceful or it is uh, going through a violent phase of disturbance, it does not mean that we hold the election. This is a constitutional tool that has been mandated, mandated by the parliament. So whether we boycott it or not, it will still go ahead. That is one reason that they might have felt, oh, uh, it really doesn't change anything. So um, let's just call off the agitation. That is one thing. And second, if you don't have legislators sitting in the Nagaland Legislative Assembly, if you don't have legislators sitting in the parliament, then even if you want to negotiate your terms, who do you talk to? The only option is the President of India. And the President of India will not negotiate with you in regard to the terms, whether it's about bringing development to the area, whether it's about creating a separate state out of Nagaland, or whether it's building a hospital. You cannot negotiate with the President of India. You are going to negotiate with a group of elected representatives, both at the state and at the constitutional level, that is the parliament. So you needed the election, so I believe this two are the reasons why 
the ENPO, I believe they felt that even if we go ahead with our boycott, it wouldn't really make any change. It would. It wouldn't really make any uh, any kind of drastic changes to the demands that we have before the government of India. All right, Dale. What, according to you, could also be the reason for this kind of uh, sudden maneuverings and movements? Yeah, I know. You know, we have been having this for a long time. Uh, when we were in the print media, there used to be a joke, you know. Uh, there was this certain organization in Naglin that you never hear of them when important events happen in the state, when important communities move in, movements are going on in, in the state. Uh, they are nowhere to be seen or heard. But whenever there is a demand for something, they would always send an ult ultimatum. So the journalists in the newspapers in in Nagaland, we would call them the ultimatum people, you know. So all these sudden decisions about boycotting and lifting the boycott, I think it, like I said before, it points to something that is deeper. Uh, maybe, like I said, we would appreciate a little bit of transparency in how things are being run, how they are dealing with issues, because this issue concerns with all of us. So another, uh, one reason I think for all these sudden decisions are the, uh, is that um, there isn't really a mechanism that tell the people that uh, things are not really transparent. That's, that's, that's as much I can say. Mm. All right, Al. You know, what does the ANBO expect in that they have now, uh, you know, decided to participate in the elections when they decided not to participate in the first place? You know, what difference does it make? Uh, yeah. I, I think uh, I read the statement and they mentioned something about a solution. So I believe that the government of India has already uh, is tacit that they have already assured the ENPO of a solution. We don't know what the solution is and we don't know what solution it's going to be applied to and what is the issue in question, but the statement says solution. So I believe it relates to the demand for a separate state. So when the ENPO said solution and they are going to find a solution after the ele election process is over, then I believe that the expectation is that once the government is in place, and of course, certainly, uh, this is something everyone is talking about, once a government, a BJP majority government, or at least a sizable BJP leadership is in place in the state government of Nagaland, then they will have more bargaining power and ease of negotiations. Uh, in regard to their demand. So I believe that they are saying, okay, let's elect first, go for elections, find leadership who would represent uh, in the assembly our aspirations, and we will talk and we will decide on it later. I think that is the main expectation right now, Nami. All right, and lastly, will the ENBO's decision impact the electoral fortunes of the candidates, especially the NDPB and the BJP in any way? Uh, right now, we, d we, we don't have eyes in the homes of candidates and we don't have eyes in the camps of political parties in Naglin right now, Naomi. So we can't really say for sure. But one thing is very sure. If at all there is some kind of an indication that the demand for a separate state for the eastern region communities is in place, if at all, it will only be because there was some kind of a tacit understanding that a leadership uh, from the PJB would be established there. This is a big vote magnet here, NAMI. You right. you, this is something that you just cannot play it out as politics because I think there, there must be an understanding that PJB leadership must be established at least in the regions of the eastern uh, eastern districts nami all right Del, thank you so much for the details thank you for having me nami